This visualised version of Bradford Odeon, Last of the Super Cinemas, is also available with subtitles for the hard of hearing. To display subtitles, click on the button below and select English. Cinemas these days are hard to love. They're out of town, surrounded by car parks and fast food restaurants, and once inside you're met by the sickly smell of popcorn, pick and mix and hot dogs. The box office has a mind-boggling array of prices, with extras for 3D glasses, comfy seats and special deals. After having your wallet lightened at the concession stand, you walk past screen after screen until you reach yours, bucket of popcorn and gallon of pop in hand. Yet we still love the cinema, the shared experience, the shared laughs and screams, the sense of community, the familiarity of it, the atmosphere of watching the silver screen. But is there something in the bricks and mortar that makes the cinema extra special? Films of all ages stick with us for life and mean different things to different people. Your first trip to the cinema, first X-rated film, first date. From kids' films from the 30s to digital animation of the 90s, from the creature of the Black Lagoon to the slashers of 80s horror, they all played out in the Odeon and brought the community closer together. The Odeon began its life as the New Victoria in 1930, a vast theatre with capacity for over 3,000 to watch shows, performers and pictures on the talking screen. Andrew Bolt is a local historian with particular knowledge of the local man who designed the iconic building. It's an Italian Renaissance design which was designed in the 1920s, late 20s by an architect called William Illingworth who lived in Bradford and was quite a prominent architect of his time. When you look around the city there are quite a few of his buildings still in existence, round and about, and what you see is probably his most prominent and successful of all of them. The Odeon was built out of two million bricks and cost a quarter of a million pounds in 1929, which is quite a lot of money when you think about it. You're not so far off a depression era, and just think of that amount of money being spent today, what it, the equivalent would be, which goes into millions and millions of pounds. It was the third largest auditorium built in this country at the time. So it was quite a significant building which brought Bradford into the forefront of cinema technology. And eventually, from it being a performing arena for bands, it also became a, a full-scale cinema. What I have here is a souvenir programme from 1935 and it's the Royal Jubilee which the New Victoria was celebrating which the theatre announcing our great Jubilee film offerings and you would get a booklet with the good old Union Jacks on and the King and Queen of the time. It was actually billed as the New Victoria Bradford's luxurious super, a gourmet British theatre and in 1935, front stalls would be 7p, balcony 9 pence, and back stalls a shilling, and circle 1 and 6. There's some more information on here which is quite good. Every attendant is instructed to show courtesy at all patrons and any complaints should be addressed to the manager. Doctors, nurses, business gentlemen, etc. expecting telephone calls are invited to leave their names at the pay box on entering when they will be called if desired. Ices, teas, chocolates, cigarettes, etc. may be obtained on application to the attendants. So you say, so this is from 1935. So you can see as well is that the, uh, the Odeon that, that was, um, obviously it was the Victoria at the time, but yeah. the, the Odeon that was, as most people know, and most people go into the, a cinema multiplex now and have people kicking their seats and popcorn flying yeah, everywhere and yeah. sticking to the floor. And it was it was a much more different experience It was um, a, back in 1935. It was could, an etiquette. Yeah. Definite etiquette. And these days you go to the cinema and it says, please do not put your phone on and things like that. It's, it's saying the same sort of thing, but in a different era. Yeah. And there's a more polite way of doing things. The Juniors Club at the Garmont was where many Bradfordians were introduced to cinema. 
Each week there would be a number of films, as well as the club song played on the Wurlitzer organ. I went to Clayton Heights Methodist Church to chat about some of their early memories of the Gaumont. Well, well, we were not the letters out at night, so like that. No, they were only on these special occasions with Cinderella Club and, and Saturday, Saturday morning when we used to see uh, all these cereals. Well, that when they were for children, you mean Saturday morning called for children? So, what, Saturday morning? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you were younger. Yeah, like, yeah, like a Saturday yeah, show. And you used to get to these, uh, what do you call it, the uh, palliative supply or whatever they call it. Superman. So, Superman. Oh. <laughs> and then there used to be Superman and Supergirl and all that. They used to all show them kind of, and, and there used to be a bit serial then. Uh, and and it'd, be, it'd be all getting killed and all that, and all of a sudden it'd finish and continue next Saturday yeah. and all that. Yeah. You, you wait till that next Saturday. Yeah, you wait till that next Saturday. We've been like TV years now. A trip to the cinema was quite a, an outing. It, it was something, a special evening out. If you think about it, that uh, wages were not particularly fantastic and you may have had to have saved up just to go to the cinema. So it was a, a night out on the town just to go and see a movie, moving pictures. So when you got there, you expected everybody to sit down and chill? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and take your cap off, don't yeah. forget that. Because <laughs> you, know, you, you think of the fashions of the time, um, you would dress up, you'd go out, you'd go out for the evening, you'd put your fine clothes on. At Christmas time, they used, they used to cut up New Vic and give them a show in organ and all that and a sing song and, and then there'd be a, on screen, there'd be a Mickey Mouse show and all that. And coming out in fire, everybody got a gift. As part of the Lord Mayor's Fund during the war, the Audion was one of a collection of cinemas that was selected for people to go and see films as a like a Christmas gift. So it was a Yuletide present uh, to all Bradford serving men and women for a particular weekend uh, at the Christmas time. Since City Park opened in 2012, it can be difficult to imagine how the Odeon sat in the centre of Bradford when it was built. Bradford in the 30s was a very different place and this in part influenced the building's design. A lot of the photographs, uh, you get quite a good view of the Alhambra and how the New Victoria fits in with the rest of the arrangement. Because a lot of people don't realise that when the New Victoria was built, it was on a, a street called Brewery Street, and it's on the site of an old brewery. Now, the New Victoria Square was opposite, and this was actually sandwiched in between the Odeon and New Victoria Square. So to make it more visible, the elaborate towers were quite prominent at either end of the street. But the actual front was quite plain design and that's why people often say, well why save it, it's quite ugly at the front. But it was made to stand out so you could see it at the end of each street and see the towers of the new Victoria. Thornton Road would still be of this sort of width, but as soon as you came out of that end tower there, you were walking across the street to another block of buildings. Uh, the new Victoria Square with the new inn, there'd be a pub there as well and a few shops. And what, what they were trying to do was trying to get you to see that the theatre was there from whether you were coming down Morley Street, Great Orton, Thornton Road, coming out of the town hall, you'd look up Tyrrell Street, you would be able to see the two towers. Whereas you wouldn't see the actual front of the building so it was a, it, the, the design was to attract people in that sense. With a lot of single or double screen cinemas about, there was always a fight to get bums on seats, and any new gimmick was an excuse to attract more custom. One of the biggest leaps was the introduction of stereoscopy, films in 3D. They introduced, it was a, a, red, a red and a blue marks on the screen, and you could see them through these glasses, and you used to get glasses Remember, 3D. Well, they do that at IMAX now. But I'm, I'm talking about when I was young, I mean. Yeah. And they give you these glasses and, and they used to put, to put yeah. the, the things yeah. together and you could see it. Oh, as if it were coming out on you, the screen, yeah. That's what, yeah, yeah. Well, about 1957, I remember it coming to Bradford, 58. 
the house of wax. Is that no, no, I yes. can't remember what it was. Well, the wax that thing that, 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 yeah. that, you know, three D wax, and that was frightening to see that if you were young, you as with House of Wax, the Garment wasn't immune to the scandalous films of the time, and neither was it immune to those teenagers trying to sneak into an X film. Lolita. Oh, okay. Lolita. Oh, yeah. Because that was an, an older person, and it really With a 14, young girl. 14 year old girl. That caused an outcry, didn't it? And Barbarella. Oh, you were. <laughs> Was it through your head? No, you were in a McLean one yeah. Was it through your head that you had sex in Barbara? Yeah. I remember it well. But I think she had these Madonna type things on, didn't she? Oh, yes. I don't know to see that. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I've got to admit, I enjoyed it. Well, enjoyed is not the right word, but I liked it. And the person I went with said, Why have you brought me to this film? I have never seen anything as horrible in my life. Cinemas were local, some of them had bouncers. Well, they called bouncers, but you know. And so if they knew you, obviously, and they knew your parents, you but. The, well, the one I went to, I think I was only 15 or 14, and two females, two lads, and we had loads of makeup on, <laughs> and we just went in, and I just laughed at this film. It was the film The Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I'm thinking, why the heck is this an X? It is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. What was it? Science didn't know, but dedicated scientists were willing to risk their lives to find out. Another thing is, it was continuous performances. And in those days, people would go in, not necessarily at the beginning of the film. Mm. They would go in and sit round till it came again. And I particularly remember this because of this Hitchcock film that's coming out now. When it was Cycle, he came on and he said, no one will be allowed, you know, when he was doing his film. Uh, Trailer. Yeah. No one will be allowed to come into the cinema in the last half hour. I think it was half hour of this film. I've suggested that Psycho be seen from the beginning. In fact, this is more than a suggestion. It is required. This, of course, is to help you enjoy Psycho more. We really have only your enjoyment in mind. The government also had its time as a venue for live acts. Buddy Holly and the Crickets, the Zombies, the Rolling Stones, the Animals. But the most memorable of them all was when Beatlemania came to Bradford in 1963. Oh no, but that was in the main auditorium. That was in yeah. the main auditorium. It was in the cinema, was that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't upstairs. It no, was in no, the cinema. That was cinema, that's right. Yeah. Because they got they had live acts come, you know, in the sixties. Yeah. The Eagles and Rollies up. They had them come to the government, and they were there in the cinema part. I We're at the back of the Odeon now, and what you can see there is up at the top uh, where the roofing is and down. That's basically where the stage is. So that's the front end of the auditorium. Uh, where the performances would have taken place and there's various doors at the bottom which would have been the fire exits for what were, were the cinemas in my time but also for the, the theatre uh, many years back. Um, I remember when we did the Great Hug a few years ago a lot of people had written on the doors the different stars that had obviously used these doors because they would have been like the stage entrances so um, 
I remember that uh, the Beatles played here twice in 1963 so they would have come through one of those doors and that is another poignant thing for people that are trying to save this that it's not just a building it's part of music history well that'll be the day when you say goodbye yes that'll be the day when you make me cry you say you're gonna leave you know it's a lie cause that'll be the day when i die well whether you're a fan or not you cannot turn your nose away from saying you know buddy holly the beatles these people came and did these performances here so it's actually part of their back catalogue you're not just looking at a the ugly backside of the building it has also significance that it's a tradesman's entrance but there's some heck heck of a tradesman being in there certain films stick with us forever but it was the atmosphere just as much as the picture that made for a great trip to the movies. And if you wanted a great atmosphere, there was no place like home. A lot younger, you would enjoy films that didn't matter what they were. You know, something you could sing to, something you could join in with. You know, similar to a pantomime for other films. And that's what you could remember. You could remember songs and you used to sing them afterwards. You know. Everybody could remember it and then just really enjoy it. The well, sound of music. Yeah, I was just, yeah. I was just about to say that. Didn't myself. anybody that enjoy it? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard anybody that said it was an awful film. Mm. Sound of music. Mm. Yeah. I would say it's a woman's film it, yourself, eh? but um, it was it very, very popular. Very, very popular. Everybody was waiting for it, wasn't they? Is it a lovely still one? Oh, I like when it's Why are they still going? I think so. I think that's part of going out, isn't it? Don't you think so? If you go, if you take, for example, if you went out to a dance somewhere and there were just a handful of people there with no atmosphere. You wouldn't go back there if the one down, you know, in the next town was <coughs> better than that and it had a lovely atmosphere. That's why people go from around the two sheets. Yeah, if you've got a film on, whether it's horror film, a love film, or a comedy, yeah. and there's 20 people in an auditorium that holds 200, mm -hmm. you'll get laughing. And there's no atmosphere. No, that's true. It's a horror uh, film. Yeah, You've got to 200 people screaming together. And 20 people don't get it now. And I can remember going to to watch Oliver when he came to Bradford for the first time. I don't know how, how old I was then, but we were queuing right around onto Thornton Road. And it will last out for weeks and weeks and weeks. So busy. I mean, and I, I'm, I don't know how many people it held at that time, but all would seem to be full when you went to theatres. In its last era as the Odeon Film Centre, the cinema still didn't fail to leave a lasting impression on those who visited. Back to Andrew Bolt. My first encounter with the Odeon was in 1977, and we stood literally at the bottom of Thornton Road, uh, at the side of the Odeon now, where I would have been stood with my dad, queuing to see the first Star Wars. <laughs> Those were the days when you couldn't pre-book a ticket, you stood and you queued and we used to queue all the way around the building until you got to the door and if you were lucky you got in, if not they would say right all sold out and you'd have to go away. <laughs> Did you make it in? We made it in yes. And, yes. and, and were you a fan? Yes, the, the unique part of going to see Star Wars here was that as the lights went down they had a glitter ball that came on that lit up the entire auditorium and then Darth Vader started heavy, heavy breathing. Well, I, I gather it was Darth Vader. It could have been somebody two rows behind and we wouldn't have known. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was that moment that triggers something magic and that's why you remember it. And it's, that's what holds something dear to this building for me, which starts you off on that 
progressive, let's do something about saving it. Richard Wilford and Vicky Leaf both shared their experiences of the Odeon in the 80s and 90s, showing that the cinema was just as loved in its later days as it was in its first. We used to go down in the evenings uh, and you know, you'd have the odd romantic moment there. Um, I do particularly remember one day that I was really annoyed uh, uh, for some reason. I don't know, my day had gone wrong and I was stomping around the halls of residence and, uh, and I went down to the floor below uh, where there was a girl who was kind of notionally going out with me, just occasionally, and nobody else knew what was going on. And I went in and just said, grab your coat, we're going to the pictures, and went down to see who framed Roger Rabbit. It was the most unromantic date ever. But, you know, she, she put up with it, she went down, she came down to the cinema with me, and to be fair... 25 years later, we are married, so it, it worked quite well. So, you know, some of my early dates with my wife were at the Odeon, so it will always have a very important part in my life. I used to go there when I was a child. My best friend when I was little, her mum and stepdad used to work there as ushers and we were allowed in the poster room and the manager at the time would allow us to take posters home. So one of my fondest memories is taking a massive Back to the Future poster home, which I subsequently destroyed when it fell off the wall and hit me. But that's another story. Um, but I've worked for Bradford Theatres for 20 years. So I've worked alongside her when she was still open. So I've got that connection. I see her every time I'm at work. lost so much of Bradford um, and I see her as the heart of Bradford. Everybody knows her, everybody uses her as a landmark. If you, if anybody wants directions to get to the Alhambra Theatre or the Media Museum and then you're in the centre of the town you say look for the domes and there you are, you, you're, you're in the culture quarter basically. I know it's not officially known as that but she's absolutely amazing and she's, she's one of the last remaining super cinemas in the UK and to actually try and do anything with her other than actually restore her is just absolute madness with a UNESCO city of film. We should embrace that, we should grasp it with both hands and fight for her. And, and to, to watch the decline from when I've been at, you know, walking through the city centre, driving past, actually being at work at, at the fantastic Alhambra, you, you know, you, you see the Alhambra, you see that the Alhambra was saved in the 80s from demolition and you just think, why can't we do the same for that beautiful building? The Odeon was a key part of the social life of most students at the time. We're talking sort of late 80s, early 90s. And my first year at university, I had a mate in the same hall of residence, and we used to go every Friday afternoon. Neither of us had lectures on a Friday afternoon. And we were, at times, just about the only people that would be there. So we'd go to, say, Buster or Big, which were two of the big films I remember in our first term there. And we'd go into the main screen, which was enormous. I mean, we'd talking the sort of size that you never see anymore with these multi-screen cinemas and he was a smoker and I wasn't initially we'd sit in the non-smoking half and then eventually he'd, he'd get the urge and he'd roll up one of his own cigarettes and he'd get himself up and he'd walk across to the smoking side we'd be the only two people in the entire auditorium and we'd be about 40 seats apart still got the smoke coming over because frankly it travels doesn't it but that, that was our Friday ritual either halves of the cinema watching whatever was the new release that week The Odeon had clung on well. Multiplex cinemas were well established as we entered the new millennium, and with the shark circling, the owners buckled and decided to close the Odeon two months shy of 70 years on from the grand opening of the new Victoria. Even though it had three screens, the Odeon was under increasing pressure to offer more choice to its patrons. Plans in the early 90s to turn the Odeon into a seven-screen cinema had fallen through. And with nothing on the horizon, the owners were forced to admit, we're going to need a bigger cinema. Thirteen years on, a number of groups are preparing their plans to reopen the Odeon. 
Lee Craven is heading up Bradford Live, which would see the Audion revert to the original auditorium for live amplified music. I asked Lee if he had ever visited the Audion as a patron. When it was a cinema, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, too, I'm not old enough to uh, no, go no. back to when it was an original auditorium, but when it was a cinema, I went to see... Uh, Do you have any particular memories? Just its size. Even, even as a cinema, it was huge. And you can imagine that in, inside the cinemas were built inside the original auditorium. So there's two cinemas side by side and under, underneath a bingo hall. So if and when we restore the original auditorium back, it's going to, I think, people take people's breath away, really, the sheer size of it. We feel that the building really has only two options for it. Uh, the first is demolition, which obviously none of us want. And the second, though, is to try and take it back to what it originally was, which was a huge auditorium designed for 3,500 people seated and up to 4,000 with stalls standing. Take it back to that original size and if it is converted back to that size then we think uh, commercial operators will be interested in it. This particular photograph shows the uh, scaffolding in 1929 which is not too dissimilar to what the building looks like today with the scaffolding in 2012. <laughs> but uh, it just shows you how we've come full circle and hopefully this isn't the scaffolding here to take it down. So the picture shows scaffolding putting it up. Let's hope that this scaffolding remains as part of a renovation, not as a part, um, part and parcel of removing the building. This building means a lot to, to Bradford people. It it's, uh, was a centre of Bradford social life for, for 70 years almost. Um, so people have very good memories. That doesn't mean that um, I've I said before at the launch event that these good memories and nostalgia don't pay the bills and a lot of money will be needed to restore this building, convert it into a new use. I, be, I believe it could be done. Uh, I think the council will want to do it um, with our help and support, hopefully. Uh, but it, it still needs that public backing uh, because I don't think, without that public backing, I think the building would have been demolished uh, years ago. Um, there's been a very grassroots campaign to save it and I think that's I think that needs to continue. I think if it's gonna be sorted out, I'm sure that you would. Yes. A lot of volunteers in. Yeah. I mean you see them in paper, don't knock it down. Yeah. There are the people there. Yeah. But it's the cop to doing it up and making it into something. Yeah. I'm sure we would get enough enthusiasts to to run it. But for how long, I don't know. We were very blessed in the late 80s, early 90s. We had Bradford Film Theatre as well, which had a couple of screens that used to show really arty stuff. Then they opened up the Pictureville, which would show another type of film. But, but you know, essentially it was part of the community. You think of that part of Bradford where you had the Bingo Hall as well, you had the Alhambra, you had the real start of the Curry Bell. And there was a feeling that, that on a, particularly a Friday or Saturday night, there, there was something going on, there was a buzz about that part of Bradford, which is something that, that whether they did it via an academy, whether they did it with live shows, just anything that creates a bit of a buzz around the city centre has to be encouraging, doesn't it? And make it feel like, like Bradford is, is a place to go for events. That would be a real positive, I would have thought. Bradford's my hometown. Um, I want to see it a lively and exciting place like it used to be. For people's, people said, some people have said to me that people from Leeds used to come to Bradford for a night out. I couldn't believe that when they told them. But that, that's what we want to see again in Bradford. And this kind of venue, bringing thousands of people into the city centre in an evening is just, just what the city needs, really. So 13 years on from its closure, the light at the end of the tunnel is beginning to appear. Whether it be from Bradford Live or one of the other groups looking to reopen the Odeon. Buildings like the New Vic aren't magic. There's nothing particularly special in the bricks and mortar. It's the people that enter it that make it special. The people that make that electric atmosphere of a packed cinema. The people that you meet with chat with and in some cases fall in love with. The campaign to save one of the last remaining super cinemas in Britain has been fuelled on the memories of those who visited it and their desire to give those growing up in the city the same opportunity. Thirteen long years has taken its toll on those campaigning and the building itself but at last the next instalment of the Bradford Odeon may be coming soon to a city near you. Bradford Audion Last of the Super Cinemas was presented, recorded and produced by Peter Crowther. Extended videos about the past and future of the Audion can be found online at youtube.com 
forward slash Bradford Audion BCB. This programme was a production for Bradford Community Broadcasting.